Hi church, it's Pastor Beth Ann and it is time for Children's Sunday School. It's Sunday, August 16th and I'm really excited to share Sunday School with you. I don't often get to teach Sunday School uh, so I'm really happy to be able to share this with you. And I'm going to read one of my favorite stories. Um, it's in Genesis 45 and it's about one of my favorite characters and Joseph. And one of the reasons why Joseph is my favorite character is because I'm the youngest sibling and I have an older brother and an older sister. And like Joseph, I could be a little bit of a snot when I was little. I know, shocking, right? You didn't expect that of Pastor Bethian, but I could. I could be a pest to my older brothers and sisters and, and kind of really annoy them. And sometimes I would say things to them and pretend that I was a favorite and all those kind of things and really upset them. And it caused problems. But that's kind of what family's like. We do that, don't we? We kind of get on each other's nerves. We spend a little bit of too much time together, maybe like during quarantine. And sometimes when we're the youngest, we can be a bit of a pest. Or maybe when we're an oldest, we can be a bit of a know-it-all or maybe even the middle ones can be that way. And so it's hard being in family together, isn't it? But in this story, God shows us where forgiveness is the best way to be family. And you see, in Joseph's story, he was a bit of a pest. So much so that his brothers actually sold him to a caravan of travelers who then sold him to be a servant slave in Egypt. And Joseph grew up in this time. He was probably a teenager when they sold him off. And uh, I had a pastor friend of mine tell me that this was a season in which God had to grow up the pest and the stupid out of Joseph. I know, kind of funny, isn't it? But it took Joseph a bit of a time to learn this lesson, but he did. So much so that as he grew in his faith, as he grew in his understanding of God, he would have dreams and God also gave him the power to interpret dreams. Now Pharaoh was having dreams during this time, very strange dreams, and Joseph was able to interpret them. And so much so that Pharaoh gave Joseph the second most important job in all of Egypt. But it was the job to help save Egypt which at the time was one of the most powerful kingdoms. Now the famine happened throughout the land and Joseph's family came to Egypt looking for food. But Joseph recognized who they were right away, but they didn't recognize him. Joseph couldn't stay silent much longer and he finally had to tell them who he was. And that's where we start with Genesis 45. And it says, Joseph couldn't hold himself any longer, keeping up a front in front of all of his attendants. And he cried out, leave, clear out, everyone leave. So there was no one with Joseph when he identified himself to his brothers. But he was sobbing so violently that the Egyptians couldn't help but hear him. And of course, they told everybody in all of the palace. And Joseph spoke to his brothers and he said, I'm Joseph. Is my father really still alive? But his brothers couldn't say a word. They were speechless. They couldn't believe what they were hearing and seeing. Come closer to me, Joseph said to his brothers. And they came close up and he said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But don't feel badly. Don't blame yourselves for selling me. God was behind it. God sent me here ahead of you to save lives. And so he goes on and he talks to them about the famine and about how God was all a part of that and that they're not supposed to blame themselves for it, but that God had a plan and God made it better. And he's like, hurry back to father, tell him to get down here, bring everything, move down here, be with me, please get father and come down here. So he's telling his brothers, bring your families. I want you to live with me. I want us to be family again. This is what he's telling his brothers. 
And he goes, look at me. You can see for yourselves. My brother Benjamin can see for himself that it's me, my own mouth, telling you all of this. Tell my fa father about all the high position that I hold in, in Egypt. Tell him everything you've seen up here. But don't take all day. Hurry up and get my father down here. And then Joseph threw himself around his brother Benjamin's neck and he wept and Benjamin wept around his neck. And then he kissed all of his brothers and they were all crying. And now, at this point, his brothers were able to talk. Kind of a fun story in some ways and kind of a sad story in other ways. But it is a story about forgiveness. And it makes me think about something like a lemon. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not about to peel this lemon and eat it like I would an orange. No way. It's too bitter. Bitter meaning, ugh, ugh. Not something I would find very refreshing or very tasty. However, you know what's really good to make out of lemons? Lemonade. But how do you make lemonade? Well... You squeeze the juice out of a lemon, you add water, and sugar. You add something sweet. And you know what's really sweet? Forgiveness. Forgiveness can take a really bitter, a really sad, a really not so tasting good moment and make it a whole lot better. When we forgive one another, when we open up our hearts to say, you know what, I accept your apology. I forgive you for hurting me. Good things can happen. And that's the neat thing about the story. Joseph's big brothers did a pretty rotten thing to them. It was dirty, low down, rotten, without a doubt. But Joseph forgave them. And he was able to not only restore his family, but he was able to restore his people. Forgiveness isn't just about you and whoever you forgive. It actually affects more than you even imagine. And so I encourage you guys, when you're in a situation where maybe you're around somebody who's a dirty rocket scoundrel or maybe not get that bad, but maybe a big brother or sister or a little brother or sister, and they're bugging you and there's all kinds of problems, why don't you look to them, add a little bit of sugar, and offer up some forgiveness. And I bet things will change. Now I encourage you to read Genesis chapter 45 or you can read the whole story of Joseph. He is the last of the great stories in the book of Genesis before we find out about Moses. And I really encourage you to read about him because there's a lot of good stuff there. So they're one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Also attached is a worship bulletin and I'll have all these scriptures in there for you and some fun things to do. And so you can get mom and dad or, or your grown up to maybe print this out and you will be able to have some fun with this. So it's wonderful to have been able to talk to you guys. I miss seeing you, and I am praying for you for this new school year. Know that you are loved, and one day we're going to be able to be back in God's backyard together. So go now and offer some sugar in those lemony situations. I'll talk to you later. Bye.